I, it's still weird for me to see sting not in the backstage area, not wearing paint, but just out in front of the camera without it. Here comes Goldberg full head of steam. He's like a bull in a China shop out there with sting. What do you make of seeing Goldberg back in the uh, WWE scene? You know, we, we thought it was a one-off, but boy, there sure is a lot of rumor and innuendo that maybe he'll be at crown jewel, or maybe there's more plans with Goldberg. Do you think we've seen the last of Goldberg in WWE? You know, I don't know. I keep hearing these little tidbits. Um, you know, they laid a little, they planted a little bit of a seed. And I think it's the kind of thing that they can decide to water that seed and, you know, keep it growing and keep it alive until they make a decision or just, you know, let it dry out and die. I don't know. I, here's my bet. Like if he said, you got to make a bet, you got to make a bet. I would bet that we'll see Bill again. I would bet most likely it'll be in Saudi because the Saudis have a very large appetite for characters from the 90s. That's what their audience in Saudi is most familiar with or had been for such a long time. So I think, to me, it seems like Bill's, Bill's one of the last of that era of, of major talent that can still get in the ring and still go. Everybody else, and I know this because... I was there for a minute in WWE. Every time that we would go through the list of legends that are available for an event, particularly for Saudi, because that's what they were looking for, they were all on do not touch lists, meaning, mm. you know, that was their category. They can't, they could be at ringside, they can run their mouth, they could do promos, they could do all that stuff, but you can't touch them. Bill's not on the do not touch list. At least he wasn't in 2019, and I suspect he's still not. So, Maybe, but I think it'll be in Saudi. We're seeing uh, Tony Schiavone looking uh, all suited and booted here. I mean, he's got a colorful tie on. He's got a, a window pane blazer on. Like, how about Tony getting all dolled up here for the first Nitro of the Vince Russo era? Yeah, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Um, it's a new look for Tony. He looks good here. Drop some weight. Got a nice suit on. It's like it actually fits them. Usually Tony wears suits. Like the suits fit them, but the arms are like three inches too long. Yeah, he goes to like Michael Hayes wear... Taylor. Huh? He uses Michael Hayes' Taylor. But he need... well, there you go. Yeah, but only, <laughs> all you see is all you see is Tony's fingertips out of the bottom of the cuff of his suit coat. So this one fit him really well. Looks good on him. So there you see one of the brackets. Uh, and there's the second bracket. And look, Medusa is in the bracket against a mystery opponent. That's real. David Flair has a shot to be world champion. So does Brian Nobbs and Medusa. Oh, wow. What the, this is right. What? Like, what are we doing? Like, I didn't even realize this is, I mean, I, I didn't watch this. So there's no way that I would have noticed it. I don't think about it. So there's no way I'd remember it. So this is like freaking news to me. Medusa getting a shot at the world heavyweight championship. Wow. How progressive is that? Well, you got to remember he's fresh off of China being in a pretty high profile spot. That's a good I point. Mean, good right point. before he left, you know, he was programming China versus Jeff Jarrett. And we know that, well, Jeff Jarrett's going to follow Vince Russo to WCW and China is going to be the intercontinental champion, not to be outdone. Okay. You got a lady who's the IC champ. What if we had a lady who was the world champ? And we know eventually that did happen in TNA for Tessa Blanchard. Backstage, we're catching up with the former outsiders and look who it is. It's Kevin Nash and Scott Hall with a big cooler. And there's Mike Graham telling them they're going to have to wrestle tonight. Uh, these guys are going to act like they're maybe a little tipsy, make some short man jokes at Mike Graham's expense. Um, yeah, it's interesting because it wasn't that long ago. Kevin Nash was out there making fun of Arn Anderson for having a cooler at the shows. And two years later, here he is with his own cooler. Um, the wrestling business will get you eventually. You could try as you might to walk that straight and narrow to be that straight edge character that punk has been successful with. You can try. Very few people can succeed. It's no surprise. They're coming to work with a case of beer. So we just saw a backstage interview from, uh, Norman smiley. And now here comes bam, bam, Bigelow coming to the ring. This is, um, a sad era of my Bam Bam Bigelow fandom. I didn't like when my man was wrestling in t-shirts. I need the full fire bodysuit. It looks cool. I just don't like this look as much. And I know it's a silly thing, but 
I can always tell uh, which era of, of Bam Bam it is based on what he's wearing. And this is probably not my favorite version. Is it just because of his, his gimmick or is it just because you don't like the kind of stories he was in or the people he was working with or just nothing? compelling? I'll, I just don't think Bam Bam ever was all that great in WCW. I don't think he was ever positioned all that great. Like I loved his work in ECW and that's what I thought we were going to get. And we just didn't. Now, I do love the idea of this match in particular. I mean, this feels like you talk about Styles Clash, Norman Smiley and Bam Bam Bigelow. Come on. That's fun. And it's fun for us because it gives us a chance to see just how good Norman is. And by good, I mean the ability to work with different people, different styles, and to be able to adapt and to do it really well. That's the mark of a real pro. And I think that's, I don't know. I don't remember seeing this match, but I would imagine that's what we're going to see out of Norman here. You're not going to see very much. Bam Bam's got a hurt back here. So it's only going to go like a minute and a half. And maybe that's why he's wearing the t-shirt too. He just, he's injured. He's hurt. He's not feeling it, but Hey, we got a show to do, man. Look at this mustache on Nick Patrick. Goodness gracious. What a mustache. Yeah, I think he was doing porn on the side at this time. That would make Tom Selleck jealous, that mustache yeah, he's got. Nasty, nasty Nick Patrick. Oh, was that the deal? Nasty Nick? Yeah. He was an aspiring porn actor. Oh, goodness gracious. Listen. Just kidding, Nick. Come on now. He's got a good sense of humor. What was his finish? Would he count to three? <laughs> Let's move on. He made every match a no holds barred. What are we doing? Never kicked out, but he always pulled out. Yeah. Oh, well, well, we got to move on. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead too far. Go ahead too far. Uh, over the weekend, of course, we mentioned Halloween Havoc. The day before was Halloween Havoc, but two nights before in Las Vegas was a Mike Tyson fight. And allegedly, you were at that Tyson fight with Hulk Hogan in Las Vegas, the same town where Halloween Havoc was happening the very next night. Do you remember that? I don't. Do you remember ever going to a Mike Tyson? I've never fight? been to it. Was I at a Tyson fight? Well, that's what was reported. I'm asking. I don't recall ever being at a Tyson fight. I'm, I'm actually sitting here going, man, it was it one of those trips to Las Vegas with Hulk where I maybe don't remember some stuff because <laughs> there were more than one or two of those, but I don't remember going to a Tyson fight with Hogan. I'd remember that because Hogan would have gotten freaking mobbed. It did. I that's weird. This is the first time I think I'm hearing about it. Now, I hope somebody can come back and say, here's a picture of you and Hulk at the Tyson fight so I can call Hulk and ask him how it was. But I, I don't remember it. So I can listen to you. Um, yeah, I guess it was against Orlin Norris. If that rings a bell. I don't even remember. Ghost Rider. 